I think we'll we'll give it a go and we'll start, right? Already, gentlemen. Okay. Okay, right. Welcome, good evening all to this webinar that we're hosting. Um, Sabona, and I greet you with peace. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, which means peace and salutations upon you. Um, on behalf of the Minara Chamber of Commerce, we'd like to welcome one and all. My name is Isa Hassam, hosting this webinar. Um, the topic for today is understanding uh, social media messenger apps, as well as uh, the security features around them. Now, we all are currently experiencing, if you're using WhatsApp Messenger, for an, for an example, um, we're all experiencing this new change, this privacy issue, privacy change that is going through WhatsApp. So some of you may have got the message on your WhatsApp to agree or disagree or not accept the new changes that are occurring. Um, but to give us more insight into these sort of things, we have two individuals that are well versed in the field of data protection, data privacy, and such social media apps. So we all do use social media apps such as WhatsApp, whether it may be bottom, some of you guys may use WeChat, um, purely because social media apps are more cheaper, faster, they make communication much more easier whether it may be on a social level uh, between family members, groups, or whether it may even be for business, but we all do make use of them. But what is the flip side? What is the flip side of it to our privacy? So that is what we are here to discuss today. Um, so we do have two individuals again. Uh, one of them is Imran Karwa. So just to give you some insight into Imran's background, if we were to see his credentials here, just reading up on it. So Imran is the Information Security Officer um, and Deputy Information Officer at Torvest Retail Services. So they're responsible for IT governance, compliance and privacy functions across his organization. Um, he's also a certified information privacy manager. Uh, with international associations of privacy professionals and he holds a bachelor of law degree uh, from the university of kwazulu natal um, our second uh, speaker they're going to be hosting presentations to more ex to, to explain these sort of concepts of privacy much more better so our second uh, um, individual who is here to guide us with regards to these privacy issues is mr ahmed wahid um, he's a senior software developer with a degree in software engineering, and he has 10 years of progressive experience. So he's highly skilled in collection and documenting users' requirements and developing logical and physical expectations. Moreover, Ahmed has a track record of uh, researching, evaluating, and synthesizing uh, technical information in design, creation, and testing out computer systems. Um, so his specialities include um, high jump, SQL, which is SQL, XML, and a whole lot of other programming languages. So I think these two individuals would be in the best uh, position to advise us with regards to what we should do when we are getting these messages on our social media apps. Should we agree or should we disagree? And what does it all mean? So to, to hand you over, I'm going to first pass you over to um, Imran Karwa, who can perhaps tell us what exactly is the actual issue that we are facing here with these messenger apps and privacy. Imran, I hand it over to you. Okay, assalamu alaikum and, and good evening to everyone. Uh, thank you for that fantastic introduction, Isa. Um, so I think, I think the starting point for all privacy issues and privacy questions uh, has to be, why do we care about privacy and, and how is it different from confidentiality? So 
In South Africa, we have a constitutional right to privacy in terms of Section 14 of the Constitution. We also have an incoming law called the Protection of Personal Information Act, uh, and that act grants us wide rights as users and as data subjects to our own personal data. So privacy is the, the security and, and the rights that you have over your own data. Now, a common adage that's, that's repeated in my industry and in the privacy industry is that you don't, if, you, if you don't pay for an app or a service, you are the app or service. And that, this is absolutely true with services like WhatsApp, Facebook, Instagram, all of that. So in exchange for you using uh, the product or service, uh, the developers and the owners of that platform harvest your data and sell it to advertisers. Now, the, the whole um, issue around WhatsApp and the new privacy policy that they pushed uh, earlier this week arose from the fact that they forced you to take the policy, failing which you will automatically be opted out and won't be able to use the app. And they very politely mentioned in their policy that if you don't agree to these new terms, uh, they've pointed you to the link to delete your, your, your account with them. So it was a, a mandatory opt-in for you to continue using the app. Um, and that's pretty draconian because if you've been using it for a while, um, you're probably wondering why they're pushing that. Um, and it might not be as insidious as some people claim it is. Um, it's for commercial purposes. Um, the, the ecosystem that WhatsApp exists in is part of the Facebook ecosystem. So uh, in a while ago, Mark Zuckerberg purchased Instagram and WhatsApp. And Instagram and Facebook uh, are his primary ad revenue generating platforms. Now, he's obviously recognized that WhatsApp has 2 billion users and there's no monetization of that platform at all. And he's looking to monetize that platform. So I'm going to hand over to Ahmed and I'm going to ask him to explain uh, the technical side of, of how these apps work. And then I'll take you through some of the privacy concerns uh, and perhaps look at some alternatives to WhatsApp and, and give you some choice and explain to you um, in as practical terms as possible, uh, what you should be concerned about, um, what the alternatives are and what you can do about it. Over to you, Ahmed. Thanks, Imran. Sorry, Ahmed, just to, just to interject, um, one thing just for the, the other um, observers that have joined our webinar, please feel free to input any questions that you guys might have in the chat and um, towards the end of the webinar, um, perhaps Imran and Ahmed can address those questions so that everything can be answered. Thanks. Over to you, Ahmed. Okay. Uh, Assalamu alaikum and good evening to uh, uh, one and all. Um, good evening also to Mark Zuckerberg, the FBI and NSA listening in on us. Uh, <laughs> it's just a bit of a side note there. Um, yeah, a lot of people warned me when jumping on a Zoom call that, uh, you know, you must be wary of Zoom sniping. Uh, because you know we sent out the invites and things like that there so uh, let's let's hope that, the, that today's uh, webinar doesn't get too exciting um so um uh, thank you to isa for choosing um for choosing me uh to present this topic it's a it's a real honor uh serving the minara and the community at large um so my my job is to tell you how your data is used is used and where does it go? Um, so, yeah, Imran um, told you the problem. I'm just putting it in, into very simple terms. So, WhatsApp has changed its privacy in terms of in terms of use to send data to Facebook and its parent company, right? Uh, Imran elaborated on that. So, what does Facebook have? Um, uh, I don't know if the sound is coming through, uh, but this is this is an interview that um, Mark Zuckerberg did in Congress. Um, where the senator asked him, how does how does people how do people how do you make money on this platform? And his response uh, with a smile at the end was, um, "We sell ads." And um, he smiled at the end. Uh, I'm not sure why the <laughs> why why the sound isn't coming through. Um, but what so what do they mean? They sell ads. I mean, you you see ads popping up every now and then. How do they know? How do they tailor make those ads to you? How do they know to target you specific ads? Um, I got a phone call uh, the other day to um, buy lotto tickets or something like that, and you know that's that's an a, an example of a poor target market because I'm Muslim, I don't gamble, etc. So to make marketing 
ads more targeted and more useful to the consumer, um, more specific to the target market that the advertiser um, is, is aiming at, they have to have as much data as possible. And that is what is happening here, right? So moving on to the next slide, and I'm gonna show you a video on how an ad is created, and you're gonna see some red flags in there. So, so this is a list of what WhatsApp is going to take from you now. Um, uh, with the new update starting on the 8th of February, um, it's, it's made businesses more, it's giving businesses more reach than ever before. And I'll show you an example of a little database that I, I, I threw up. So this is, um, this is before WhatsApp. Right before, before, so so you can choose. This is um, uh, Facebook login data. So my my name, my email address, my age, my city. I mean, people chose not to put their city in. You can choose your country. You have to choose your country, and you can put in a cell number. It can even be private. Uh, you don't have to to make it public, but it can even be private. This is what your data is going to look at very high level after the Facebook update. Okay. So instead of Ahmed only having um, uh, an email address, a town and his cell number, which is private, it's gonna check what I used to spend, uh, to spend on uh, with a WhatsApp business account. So I'm gonna be interacting with the WhatsApp business account. He's gonna send me a catalog. I'm gonna click on that link and they're gonna facilitate something called WhatsApp pay or introduce a payment gateway to be able to buy something. And then it's gonna track your purchases. So uh, Ahmed Vahid, myself, uh, bought a cell phone, a watch, and a ring from a specific business account. It's also looking, let's go back um, to the slide, it's also looking at your device ID and user ID, right? So it's, it's already know, it already knows what phone I have and how many contacts I have, because if you remember that it, it looks at your contacts as well. So um, if you go into your Facebook settings, Right, um, a lot of you guys are syncing your contacts because you'll see suggested contacts on the page. So it syncs your contacts using the cell phone number of the user or the email of the user or the name of the user. And it finds the closest match on Facebook that you may know and it'll give you a friend suggestion. The friend suggestions aren't random. It's based on an algorithm that takes your mutual friends, your basically your, fr your friends' friends, so it's, it's aiming to increase your network. By increasing your network, it increases its marketing, your marketing reach, okay? And now with the advent of WhatsApp, it's gonna have much more, much, much, much more implications, right? So I'm gonna uh, take you through a video on, on creating a, a Facebook ad, right? And you're gonna see, um, uh, uh, some, you're gonna see some scary stuff here. Um, uh, but this is the new um, advertising platform, right? So, um, this is going to go ahead. This is going to, uh, I'm just showing you, uh, this is a basic, uh, what a page should look like. Uh, I'm just going to put in a, a, a business name and it's, it's going to give you some, uh, gives and give you a category and a description, right? So going to fast forward through that. So I just put it, uh, any term in there, right? So the, 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 now it, it has automated ads. You can choose a goal for your ads, right? So it starts asking these questions, right? Do you want people to come to your location? Do you have a website, right? I'm just going through it because we don't have a lot of time. Do people buy products? Yes or no? Um, can you book appointments? The most important thing for me was leads, right? Do you want people to contact you? Yes. So phone numbers are very important. Um, they call me and they message me on WhatsApp. So there's it. So this is now you're connecting your WhatsApp. So here is the connection now between your Facebook and your WhatsApp. This is the this is now I'm I'm linking my actual number here <laughs> um, to 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 my Facebook account. And what that's going to mean now is every business or every individual that I chat to using my my cell number, right? Um, so it's asking me to download WhatsApp for Business, right? I, di I didn't opt into that, but uh, WhatsApp for Business is doing that. So now every person that chats to my business account, Facebook now will have access to after the, after the update. 
Okay. Um, so you're going to add interest now. So I'm creating my audience for my ads, right? So I want people to do app development. Just going to fast forward here and put in a picture. Okay. Now look at the amount of people I'm reaching, right? Okay. So I'm just going to pause there and go back to the Excel document. Um, so how and how an ad works, right? Is the more you pay, the more, imagine it's an Excel document, the more filters you get. So imagine I want to, I want to um, reach everyone in South Africa, right? That's extremely broad, right? That's going to be maybe $1 or $2 um, spent, right? I want to target now only people in Durban because I have a specific, there you have it refined. And I want to sell, I'm going to say makeup, boom. So now with the, the data update now, I can specifically target Cassie Lane who lives in Overport. That's her cell number. That's, that's the, the, the bank she banks with. She previously bought makeup. This is uh, her cell phone and uh, uh, what cell phone she has. So I can target these devices and these people specifically. And that's where the, the, the privacy issues come in, okay? So um, it, it shows an average of how many clicks you're gonna get. I'm just gonna fast forward here. All right, here, so here's the important bit. This is where, um, where so just, just look at the potential reach, right? So I'm gonna put in South Africa, right? Okay, I'm gonna take out United States. And now I'm going to reach 14 million people because 14 million people in my target audience have Facebook, right? Now, the number of users on Facebook is not necessarily the number of users on WhatsApp. So in order to increase this reach, you, linking your WhatsApp now to Facebook will, will increase that reach. And it's, yeah, so so you can you can you can create more more target audience. So so but but basically, I think you understand understand the point I'm trying to make here. Um. So so the, so the bottom line for, for for this for this exercise is all this information here on on this. The, this is this is this is not something that I came up with. This is directly from from WhatsApp and and Forbes magazine. Um. So it has access, and then and then people also created what is cause location. Okay. Um, I don't know if I'm saying that right. So cause location is um, your network provider location. So it, so um, how they say it is pinging the cell towers. It's not your GPS refined location. So um, that's actually better. However, WhatsApp does have the ability to pinpoint your location when you when you do check-ins, when you upload metadata from your from your um, your pictures that you take. Um, uh, so, so for example, if you go now to your camera app, you'll see that there's location tags there. Um, Facebook reads those location tags on your photos, um, and you can actually go in the Facebook privacy manager, uh, account manager in the back, and look at the map where you took those photos. Um, so we have already agreed to these terms on Facebook, and now we are agreeing to these terms on WhatsApp. Facebook is going to know more about you. Okay. So the next question um, that, that people ask is, so can WhatsApp read my chat? So I've got a funny little thing here. Uh, you finally asked her out in, in WhatsApp HQ. No, um, the, the, the short answer is no, they cannot, they cannot uh, uh, read your, your in, in your, within your chat, it's private to you and the person you are talking to. The server sitting in between at the exchange server where the messages are being are going to and from, we have no view over that. Um, so it's encrypted at your end and you and the person you are talking to end. And it uses something called the signal protocol. Why is the name of that protocol sounding very familiar to you? Because we're also discussing a, another app called Signal, right? And funny enough, the protocol was developed by Signal. And I'm going to get into that uh, um, uh, just now. Um, so, so basically, WhatsApp cannot read the content in your chats, right? Um, so, so what platforms have it and don't? So Signal and allegedly WhatsApp have the Signal protocol enabled by default. Telegram, uh, which, is the, which is the other option, 
does does not. Uh, you have to go into settings and enable um, um, the, that setting for secret messages, right? So people are flocking to to excuse me Telegram, and they don't even have the encryption enabled by default. Um, so the the Telegram uh, uh, the Telegram app Telegram app was created by the the person who created the VK social media platform that that exists in Russia. And he was actually fired from VK. The reason was that in, in the Ukrainian uprising, right, um, uh, the Russian government ordered VK to send over the Ukrainian protesters' data, and he actually refused um, refused that. And um, do, and you know why? When when Russia issues you a threat, you you step down. So so um, there was a whole scandal, and he left. But but that's actually a good sign in that a person. Um, is refusing to send data over to governments. Uh, Facebook, on the other hand, does not does not refuse. It fully cooperates with with with, with Google with Google as well. Um, the the second thing to note um, uh, about about that is that uh, Telegram has channels. So uh, there's there's amazing channels that you can that you can get on that. It's like a it's like a group uh, that you can search for and join. It's not like a, a WhatsApp group where you where you need invite links and everything, even though it's a public uh, public uh, domain. So I found very useful Telegram channels um, uh, for for tech data and 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 programming tutorials and 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 resources and solutions. And if you're studying, where that can come in uh, harmful is they have the people nearby function. The people nearby function. People create terrible groups there about selling drugs, etc. So um, it's 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 advisable to keep your kids away from that. So that's not a myth. That's actually true. Um, and and lastly, you have Signal, which which I love because Signal goes encryption first. So they they focus. They solely focus on encryption. Um, uh, Telegram. Sorry, I know I'm jumping back and forth, but Telegram has is now going to introduce ads from next year but it's not going to be ads that you, you see a 30 second video because now that they have such an influx of users they're going to need some way to monetize that uh, um, monetize that so um, they're going to put ads in the channels that you join so basically if you're not part of a channel you will not receive ads uh, because hosting a channel is a lot of server costs etc so they just announced that um, um, recently so should should you delete whatsapp um, uh, I'm going to bring up this. If you want um, Mark Zuckerberg um, to know about this, to know this much about you, so I'm going to filter that. If if you want, if you're happy with Mark Zuckerberg knowing all this about you, and when I say Mark Zuckerberg, it means the Facebook headquarters, which they will synthesize and put into big data queries and sell off um, to the to to analytic companies, to to ad revenue companies, etc. If you are happy with them knowing about it, then you can completely go ahead and, and still use WhatsApp. Um, the advantage, the, the very, the only advantage I see this is because, say for example, there's an auntie sitting at home and, and selling samosas, right? Um, so so she wants to target people who bought samosas. So she can she can create ads on on Facebook and. Um, Let's say select all and target people for samosas, and we see Bilal K from Indonesia bought samosas, and we can target him. Um, that's that's the only advantage. So if you are a business, it's it's an advantage to you because now you can um, laser focus your ads to the target market that you that you want. Um, the disadvantage is that as a consumer, your data is is out there for for the highest bidder. And um, so I'm not going to tell you what to do. I'm just going to urge you to think before you do it. Um, and yeah, that's it from me. There's my email address on the screen, but you can contact uh, Amina. Uh, if you have any questions, just uh, pop it in the chat. And uh, yeah, we, we can talk about it. OK, thank you, Ahmed. I think that was. Um... I think that was an absolutely informative uh, presentation, which put in a lot of uh, questions, answered a lot of questions um, with regards to what exactly does clicking yes to the WhatsApp um, terms mean? Um, it seems as if it's targeted a lot at uh, advertising from a Facebook perspective.
Um, I think you hit it on the head. Um, what we can do is advise, and if a consumer or if an individual is comfortable with allowing the likes of Facebook and whatnot to have that sort of information at their fingertips, then by all means. Um, but if you are a little bit cautious about your privacy, I know some, some of us will really be cautious with regards to what did we last buy um, with our bank accounts. Um, that's, that's something which, which I'm sure some people would be a little bit hesitant to share that sort of information. Um, I think perhaps Imran from your side, maybe you can also elaborate as to which sort of platform we should be choosing and um, you know, from with regards to this privacy and how strongly do you feel about this entire privacy issue, given that you're quite involved in this specific field? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Issa. Um, and that was a fantastic presentation by my colleague, uh, Ahmed. So I just want to, I just want to touch on a few things that he mentioned um, be, before I, I move along with, with some of the things I'd like to bring up. The first being the fact that um, there are organizations that are collecting your personal data. And these organizations are big companies. They're based in South Africa. They're based abroad. They're based all over the world. And they're collecting all of these fields of data that, that uh, Ahmed uh, you know, displayed in his database. The problem with that is it's not a company that has access to your data. It's people who have access to your data. And the thing is, do you want people that you don't know having access to things like your location, your sensitive preferences, uh, the places that you check into uh, when you leave and you, and you get back home, your workplace, your home, um, your commute, your travel distance, uh, the things you buy online, your Google search, your search history, all of that stuff. Uh, remember, there are people who are aggregating that data. Also, in the event of a data breach, that data becomes publicly available, which means that anyone can have access to that data. And we have a particular problem in this country where safety is a big issue for everyone. Uh, and if someone has access to where you live, uh, where you work, what time you commute to work and back, it becomes a serious safety risk uh, for every one of us. You also don't want people having access to data that you consider especially, uh, especially uh, private. So I often get the question that, you know, people always ask me, um, why do I need to care about privacy? I'm not a terrorist. I don't intend to do anything criminal. I'm an ordinary law-abiding citizen. The problem is you have an expectation and a right to privacy, firstly. And secondly, if I had to ask any of you in the audience to give me your Gmail address and password, you probably wouldn't. And, and I've asked this at many seminars, and not one person has ever volunteered their, their personal information. That's because your search history is private. You wouldn't disclose that to anybody. So, so you have a right and, a, and, a, and an expectation to that. The other thing being encryption. So while your WhatsApp chats are encrypted, um, they're stored in the cloud on WhatsApp and Facebook servers unencrypted, which means that if that data is leaked, someone could read your WhatsApp chats. And make no bones about it, WhatsApp has already disclosed personal user data to law enforcement agencies and agencies all over the world. There are also um, non-governmental organizations that are able to break into, into the Signal protocol and WhatsApp's um, encryption as well. Um, I won't get into that, unfortunately, but um, I, I'm, gonna address one of the, I'm gonna address some of the questions and then I'll jump into those, right? So the first one being uh, Roche's question about uh, the Cambridge Analytica scandal. scandal. And if you've been following that, you would know that in 2016, uh, Cambridge Analytica, an organization or a third party that was receiving Facebook data, created ad campaigns that specifically targeted Republican um, and people who are on the fence when it came to the elections. Um, and what they did was they targeted adverts that were specifically designed to skew the vote in favor of Donald Trump. And essentially they won the election for Donald Trump in 2016 which is absolutely shocking. And, and thankfully, you know, Cambridge Analytica has now been disbanded. The company has, has no longer exists, but there are organizations who do that on a regular basis. So there are campaigns that use your data to target specific things to you, right? Um, and I'd, I'd like to take this offline with you perhaps, or, or to have another session around how Facebook is used to sway audiences and how it can be used to essentially, you know, um, corrupt an election or to, influence the outcomes of an election. But that's that's a conversation for a different time. And I see Mohammed's, um, Mohammed Masoom's question around uh, the Poppy Act. And I'd like to, to address that. So, 
So there is a bit of a misconception. The Poppy Act is not in full effect as yet. It will be in full effect from the 1st of July, 2021. It's partially in effect. And I was gonna get into this later on in the conversation, but the information regulator of South Africa uh, and one of their deputies has informed me reliably that they've been in conversation with Facebook South Africa around the new terms that WhatsApp has put up. So they're quite active. Um, I know some of the, the members of the regulator quite closely. Uh, we're in the same WhatsApp group and, and we talk pretty often and they're very active and they should have an outcome for us pretty soon. So they are acting in the best interest of data subjects in South Africa and users in South Africa. Um, and we should see an interesting development there. So I'm just going to share something um, with all of you. All right. So, um, so obviously, we, we've we've had a, a brief overview of of messenger apps and and the data that they share already in in this country. Uh, but what, what do the new terms mean and what do they practically mean uh, for you as a user? So essentially what, what WhatsApp has now said is that um, they're now gonna be sharing more of your data with their sister apps, Facebook and Instagram. But what does that actually mean? So, so Facebook has a digital marketing ecosystem and Amit showed you the different types of adverts and the granular level that you can get to uh, when you are putting out ads on Facebook. And you can do the exact same thing with Instagram. And that's great because it allows you to target specific people. But what if you don't want your data being used like that? Well, unfortunately, if you're using WhatsApp and WhatsApp being part of the same ecosystem, you've got to take it or leave it now if you accept those new terms. So you've got until the 8th of February. If you don't accept those new terms, you've got to go and delete your account. It's, it's plain, plain and simple. WhatsApp has come out and they've vehemently defended their position. Um, as you'll see, they've taken out physical adverts in, in the Times of India. They've put out messages on all their social media because they've been hemorrhaging users for the past week and a half. Um, and I can't be the only one who sees the hilarious irony in a digital only app like WhatsApp putting out physical adverts in a newspaper which is a very old school and a legacy way of doing things. So, so WhatsApp has taken the position that they protect your privacy and that they secure your messages. Unfortunately, that's a big fat lie because they don't. Um, what they do is they share a lot of your data and, and, and you, know, for, you, can, you can disabuse yourself of the idea that they haven't been sharing your, idea, your, your data because they've been doing it from 2016 and they've been Use, they've been using your data and sharing your data with your consent. So you've accepted the updates previously and you've allowed them to use your data. So I think it's disingenuous of them to put up adverts like this and to, to consistently put out this message. And they're doing it primarily because there's been a huge shift to other apps like Telegram and Signal. So if you wanna know, you know at a broad level what that looks like and what the, uh, the, um, the entirety of the data that is shared uh, what these apps looks like. Um, here's a great little um, graphic that, that shows you what that looks like. So you would see that, that on the right-hand side, Facebook shares a ton of your data. And the, the terrible thing with that is that Facebook uses that data in a way that no one else uses that data. They're able to target you even without you having a Facebook account. So they create shadow Facebook accounts. They link you based on pictures that are taken at you know, family functions and work events, um, and they create pro profiles about you, including things like your political beliefs and your cultural background, even if you don't give them that data, which is incredibly insidious. Um, so this is the data that, that they have on you and the data that they have about you if you use their platform. And Facebook is pretty much the worst privacy actor. So they've been called into congressional hearings in the Senate in the US, um, they've been guilty. The Facebook app has been found to be accessing your microphone and your and your phone's cameras even after you've closed the app. So at random times of the day, they've been accessing that. And they've been doing that not because they want to see you uh, in compromising positions, but because they want to know what you do, what your house looks like, where you live, what your commercial circumstances are, so that they can tar target you with better adverts and that they can sell advertising revenue to advertisers. So if you look at WhatsApp, WhatsApp is no different. And that, that, th that set of fields that WhatsApp collects is about to expand. And that's the whole point of this, this WhatsApp update that's come up, right? 
Yeah. Um, by contrast, Telegram con uh, collects a lot less information. However, uh, there are issues with Telegram as well. They use a proprietary um, encryption software, which is not audited by anyone else. And I guess Signal is a privacy focused option that has recently been endorsed by Edward Snowden and Elon Musk. So it is the option that you would want to go for. However, with both of these platforms, there's a certain amount of user friction. So you're not gonna have all your contacts on there. Your friends are not gonna be there. Um, it's gonna be a little difficult to use. It's gonna be a different experience. But I mean, most of us have come from using Mixit and, and BlackBerry Messenger. So it's not a difficult leap for us to make. Unfortunately, it's a generational issue as well. So uh, the older generation might struggle to make the move and, and relinquish the, the convenience of it. But you've got to ask yourself, um, what convenience are you willing to trade for your own privacy and for the data that, that you are essentially giving away for free to these companies? And I think that that's pretty much it from my side. I think we, we, are, due a, we are definitely due a, an extended conversation with the Protection of Personal Information Act coming out later this year. Uh, there are a lot of, lot of topics to cover as data subjects. Each one of you has um, many, many rights in terms of, of the Poppy Act or Papaya, as it's called. Um, if you reside in outside of South Africa, there are, there are data protection laws that are developing all over the world. Um, and if you have any questions around this or you'd like me to, to address anything specific, I'm happy for you to, to reach out to me uh, on my email address or, or scan my QR code and connect with me on LinkedIn and we can discuss it further. Okay, over to you, sir. Excellent, thanks Imran. Thanks for that um, that presentation as well. I think that also put a lot of uh, the information into perspective as to what sort of information does Facebook. So just having Facebook as an app on our phones does already collect all the data that we are fearful of actually giving through to WhatsApp. So too does WhatsApp collect it and it seems like all these apps are just collecting all our data and we don't even know it. Um, just from a business perspective, because we've got a lot of businesses or businessmen that have also tuned in. Um, a lot of businesses have used um, applications like WhatsApp for business, uh, which has helped their businesses to, to, con to, to sort of connect with their clients. And some of them have introduced plugins into their websites, into their mobile sites. Um, the alternatives such as Signal and um, and uh, um, Telegram. Do they also have these sort of plugins? Maybe you guys may might have come across these sort of things. Um, plugins for, to, to accommodate businesses to reach out to their clients. So, so that's a great question, Isa. And, and it may talk to, to the recent WhatsApp update, uh, given that uh, Facebook insists that this update is purely to assist businesses on WhatsApp. And, and you know, there's, there's no doubt that there's huge commercial benefits to for organizations who use WhatsApp and who are able to reach their, their you know, consumer base, especially in developing countries like South Africa, across the Af African continent, places like India. Um, it's an invaluable tool. Unfortunately, for consumers, um, it's, it's not a great update. Now, the thing is, while WhatsApp is not looking into your conversations per se, they are collecting metadata around your conversations. So, they're now gonna know um, who you're speaking to, how long you are talking to people, what times you engage with particular people, what areas you're talking to them. All of that stuff will help you as a business and it'll, it'll help you to target a, a better or, or, a, or a more readily um, available consumer. Unfortunately, it also means that consumers are relinquishing more of their data. And we've seen a huge uh, drive towards people moving away from WhatsApp, which may affect that as well. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, I've seen in the last two weeks, I've seen dozens of friends joining joining um, Telegram. Uh, and, you know, oddly enough, people that I've got blocked on, on WhatsApp and are now messaging me on Telegram. So uh, I'm not quite excited about that, but um, but it is it is what it is. And what's what's happening is we're seeing a trend towards people jumping away from WhatsApp. I think because they're starting to care about their own privacy, they're starting to realize that their data is being mishandled and misused once again. Um, and, and given the fact that, you know, uh, there's, there's a more of an awareness with, with South Africa's Poppy Acts coming into effect, and I'm glad that people on this call are aware of it as well, um, and that there's more awareness of it, people are more sensitive when it comes to relinquishing their personal data. 
So yes, it, it does have commercial benefits and there's absolutely a, a benefit for businesses and small businesses you know, having it. Unfortunately, it's, it's a double-edged sword and, and you've got to make it a call on um, what you're willing to trade for your privacy. Thanks, Imran. Thanks for that. All right, Ahmed, any, any last parting words from your side? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Imran told me not to touch on the Cambridge uh, Analytica thing because he knows how passionate I am about that. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Um, so I was just reading um, uh, a comment here. Since our information is already out there and we don't know, we don't know who has what. Obviously, this mess is irreversible. Um, he, the answer to that is yes. Um, uh, even if you go now and 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 you delete your your Facebook account, uh, you delete your Google account. Um, the way big data works is that it's not they they're not going to be responsible for going back and now deleting your data of what was there. If you have and I'm going to say stain the internet, that stain there's no stain remover for that. Um, yeah, your 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 stuff is already out there. Um, uh, so yeah, that's that's one thing. The other thing is that. Um, Use a VPN. <laughs> uh, a VPN is uh, a, a virtual private network. I don't want to go into the specifics of it, but essentially, um, I'll, I'll explain it in layman's terms. You, from your device or from your computer, are telling the internet that you are somewhere else. So, for example, a, a VPN will create. Um, uh, it'll it'll block. Um, incoming traffic or control incoming and outgoing traffic from your location or IP address. And it will say that you are in the United Kingdom with a different IP. So that you will be giving essentially um, wrong information uh, uh, back to the back to. And, and the, the other thing is uh, be safe online. Uh, uh, if, if you look in your browser and you make any purchases on take a lot and, and, and things like that, um, Google has this pop up. To, for autofilling data, turn it off um, uh, because it's, it starts learning more about you. They even have an option to save your credit cards. Um, I turn it off, <laughs> turn it off. Um, even if you have to remember something with pen and paper, I know um, Edward Snowden is famous for entering his password with a blanket over his head. That's how much, how serious he takes privacy. Um, so, yeah, my advice is to just be wary about, about what you put out there. And um, yeah, the, the, the damage, as I said, is, is already, already done, but we can be more responsible going forward. So I'm just, just to add on, add on to what you've said, I think, I think the answer is a little more complicated than that, right? So we are constantly providing our data to these platforms and these service providers. So your, your data is constantly being aggregated and collected. So while the damage may sort of be, be done already, you're gonna limit the, the collection of further data that's collected from you. And importantly, and, and this is very important, once the Poppy Act comes into effect on the 1st of July, you will have rights that include the right to request a copy of your data from anybody who has your data. Absolutely any organization in the country that has your data, you will have a right to request a record of that data. You will also have a right to request um, that that organization deletes your personal data. So they've got to scrub it off their systems. Uh, they've got to delete the, the records on their computer systems, in their emails, uh, on their email servers, uh, on their databases. And they've also got to delete the physical or, or remove the physical documentation that they've got with your data on it. So this is a powerful piece of legislation that's coming into effect. And organizations are going to have to you know, um, invest huge amounts of resources to ensure that they they comply with this law because the consequences are up to 10 million rand in fines for businesses that are not compliant and up to 10 years imprisonment for misuse of personal data. So you have a lot of rights. You can request that they delete your information. And, and this is more so for bigger organizations like Facebook and, and Instagram because uh, they're based in, in, in the US and, and in the UK and, and Europe has something called the GDPR. And the GDPR is an even more active piece of legislation. So the regulators in Europe are far more active. Um, and they find organizations like Facebook and Instagram huge amounts of money uh, for misusing personal user data. So you have a lot of rights and it's not the end of the road um, and you absolutely should care about your privacy. 
Um, uh, just on that, I know there's a lot of businessmen who have websites, who are designing apps, developing apps. I know a lot of you farm your, your development overseas as well. Um, they just, people who are developing your app or your, or your um, uh, website, etc. cetera, um, you need to put in there uh, uh, terms and conditions, uh, terms of use. Um, uh, uh, I know Imran uh, is, is, is familiar with that documentation, but you have to put in a little pop-up that comes out from the top of the screen saying, by using the site, I accept the following cookies and I accept the terms of use. It's very important um, uh, um, because a lot, of, a lot of guys have contact forms on your website, accepting payments to your website. It's not as easy as going to Shopify and, 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 and putting your, your on, uploading your stuff. The, the, the privacy and the information that you capture from your customers has to be regulated and, and you're going to have to have your terms and conditions, T's and C's um, uh, on that. So if you're ever doing software development, et cetera, just make sure that uh, your customer's data is handled, uh, handled safely, uh, securely, and they made aware that you are storing it and destroying it when needed. Excellent. Thanks, Ahmed. Thanks, Imran. Thanks for that. So I think one for some of the guys who might have joined us late, just to reiterate, I know it you you sort of went through it in your slide as well, Ahmed. The actual messages that everybody is sending in WhatsApp, just to to kick out the the elephant out the room or so, to sort of clear out the air, um, those messages cannot be posted on live Facebook or Facebook will not don't have access to it because it's encrypted, and someone can be rest assured if they are using uh, um, WhatsApp, their personal messages cannot really be accessed and posted out for the world to see on Facebook because you get that sort of question a lot for the layman who, who has just started WhatsApp and who has started using social media because you get, you get that question quite a lot. Just to confirm, that's a resounding no, am I right? So, so that, that's um, good. Yeah, this, so they use, they use the signal protocol. Uh, uh, um, yeah. Well, allegedly, uh, apparently even Facebook Messenger uses that. Um, uh, there's been two murder investigations in India where uh, they claim that certain WhatsApp messages were leaked. But I think that it wasn't um, leaked per se. I think it was, um, uh, it was, there were screenshots taken and stuff. So you can still send screenshots, but that's a breach of privacy, which uh, I know Imran can touch on. Your backups of those chats, as Imran mentioned, uh, are stored in Google Drive. Um, um, which, which they also claim are encrypted, but yeah. Uh, sorry, Imran, you were saying? Yeah, I, I was saying, Issa, so, so you don't need to worry. No one is, is intercepting the, the recipes that your mom is sharing with her friends. <laughs> um, they're, not, they're really not looking into that. Um, but unfortunately, you know, WhatsApp is part of the Facebook ecosystem now, and, and it's a privacy risk going forward. So people do have legitimate concerns, uh, yeah. but with regard to whether they're looking into your day-to-day -day messages, they're absolutely not. Ah, okay, perfect. Okay, thanks, gentlemen. I think that was an absolutely informative session. And I think it sort of dispelled any sort of uh, concerns that people might have, but also raised a few concerns that people might have with regards to their privacy. Um, and I think based on what you guys have told us, it's obviously based on the individual as to how much he wishes to share. And um, I think we've addressed the questions as well that have been posted on the chat, but I hope we've addressed it. Um, if anybody needs Imran's or Ahmed's direct details, feel free to contact the Minara Chamber of Commerce and I'm sure we'll be glad and happy to share that with you guys. From our side, uh, Imran and uh, Ahmed, we'd like to say shukran. Thank you so much for making the time and joining us and, and imparting this knowledge, very, very valuable knowledge with us. And may you guys continue to grow in your fields and may you guys continue to guide the, the community and as well as guide, well, give your input and grow South Africa at large. I mean, so thank you very much, Isa, and thanks for being a fantastic host and thank you to Minaro. You're more than welcome. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Okay. Thanks, guys. All right. Cheers, man. All right. All right. Sit down.